Well, I don't know if it was traumatic, but it was very real. Oh, I'll tell you, yeah, because a lot of folks saw me do the little short video in the mall this past weekend. I went with the whole family, uh, grandparents, kids, whatever. And everyone decided to eat at the Cheesecake Factory. We get there very early, about four o'clock in the afternoon. A little very early for dinner, but, you know, I got some old people involved. They were, uh, and, you know, the place gets crowded, so everyone was comfortable with that. We get in, they tell us it's going to be a four-hour wait. Four hours. First of all, you're the Cheesecake Factory. You're a fake restaurant. What do you have that someone would wait four hours for? Are you kidding me? And then also, how do you look someone in the face at four-hour wait? Okay, so it's four o'clock. Come back at eight o'clock. I got kids. We got, you know, everybody here. That's ridiculous. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com. And today we're going to talk about making that transition from using dynamic device groups with the autopilot group tags to assigning things in Intune with device filters. I mean, you know me, I'm not very uh, adventurous, but uh, compared to waiting four hours, I'd rather literally just jump off a mountain somewhere with a, with a parachute, of course. Get Rubik's. Solving for the modern workplace. So I'm going to reference my own work. For a long time, uh, my team and I have been using the group tag structure for autopilot. The idea was instead of just, you know, registering everything uh, using the ZTDID physical attribute to say, hey, these are all my autopilot devices, right? We apply a group tag when we, you know, put the device in autopilot and we use that group tag to force the device into a dynamic device group. And this allows us to use that same group for all kinds of things, right? So if you look down here, it lets us, you know, have different builds. So for example, kiosk or corporate devices. And then once you have different types of devices, you can then say, okay, these are my policies and applications for everyone. I can scope them down to just specific build types. This gave us a very clean way to go from you know, autopilot to having things in a nice group and then uh, targeting our apps and policies at the individual groups. All right, well, hold on. If this is a if, if this was a good system and everything worked fine, why are we changing this? The reason is, as Intune grows, it's becoming more apparent that for whatever reason, assignments in Intune happen faster when you use what's considered virtual groups. What do I mean by virtual groups? So. Typically, Intune looks at all your intro groups, right? Uh, that's where the groups come from. Intune itself doesn't have groups, whether they're dynamic or assigned or whatever. However, Intune knows two things. It knows all users and all devices. And because those are built into Intune without having to communicate and look at intro groups, they're faster by default. But of course, assigning something to all devices or all users isn't always the right solution. We don't want to do that, especially in the example I just showed, right? You might have one set of apps going to one set of devices, you know? So what we can do is we can still use the all devices target, but the device filters will help us narrow down what we want. And we can even base some of that on those dynamic groups. So we can keep our group tag structure, but still switch to filtering. So let's go ahead and whiteboard this out. I mean, you knew we were going to pull the whiteboard out. All right, so let's try to break this down. I have a PC that's registered through autopilot and gets a group tag assigned. Let's say that group is corp. So because it has that group tag, it's going to be placed in my dynamic intra device group. Okay. And that's the dynamic rule for my group. So it's you know, we've covered this in the blog and I'll put the link below so you can see it. But basically it's saying any device with a tag that starts with corp, which would be this guy, um, goes into this group. Okay. Now I have two separate autopilot deployment profiles and these are assigned dynamically to the device based on the group. So let's go ahead and say the corp profile is assigned to the corp group. So now let's take a look at the device once it's enrolled. So once the device is enrolled, we know it has some of these attributes. We know its device name will be whatever name I gave it up here. And in this case, mine is set to Rubik's Corp Serial. We also know the enrollment profile name because we named it and we know that that's where it got that from. So if we were to look at Intune and now we're tasked with assigning things to this. So what we used to do 
like I said, what we used to do was this. We used to assign the objects in Intune, whether they be apps or policies, to the group itself. But remember, we're not doing that anymore. We're assigning things to all devices. However, because we know these two attributes, we can use them as a filter. So while we're assigning, it's going to look at that filter first. So that filter can include the device name or the enrollment profile name to scope down to just the specific devices we want. So if I zoom out, you can see we can still organize everything from autopilot registration, which is up here, and use filters now so we're not assigned direct directly to the group, but just use those attributes. Kind of being a little sneaky here, right? We still want to organize the way we want, but we want our stuff to deploy fast, so we're going to use those virtual groups like all devices. Because we want what we want. It has to match all of our criteria. All right, so what does this look like in Intune? If we look at my enrollment profiles, because I'm not even sure anymore. I do so much stuff. Um, okay, so I have one for my Zero Touch AI group, and then I have my M365 group. So default M365 court profile. Let's look at the properties. Okay, so we're naming this Z0T. So Z0T are my corp devices. Now, if I go to my Zero Touch AI devices, they start with ZTAI. So perfect. So let's go to a configuration that I typically would deploy to my corp devices. So if we look at this hello disabled policy, right, where I'm prohibiting Windows hello, it is assigned to M365 devices. Well, let's look at that group. So here it is, M365 devices, and this is a dynamic group. And the group is looking for the group tech. Order ID is M365. And that's how I'm defining my corporate devices. Now, instead of this, we can do, so we can still keep this organization. We just want to change things a little bit. So we're going to go to device, devices and filters. And we want to add a filter, platform apply. Uh, all right, let's create a new filter. And we're going to call this M365 Corp Devices. And it's devices with name devices where name starts with Z0T. So that's how I define them. We'll select Windows. And what we'll do is we'll say device name starts with Z0T. And we can even put the little dash. Okay. So if we hit preview, look at that. It's already finding devices. So why don't we go ahead now, back to that policy, uh, Windows Hello Disabled, and I'm going to remove the group assignment from it. And I'm gonna add all devices, but I'm gonna edit the filter. So I'm gonna include filter devices in assignment. So we're gonna do M365 corporate devices, select. All right, and that should take care of that. Now you can do other things with filters as well. So if I were to go back for a second, let's look at BitLocker. BitLocker, I have my autopilot devices filtered. Well, what's that? Ah, so this is where the device enrollment profile name is equal to the default M365 Corp profile. So I wonder, will that get me the same results? Well, let's go back and look at filter. So with the one we just made, but if we go to rules and preview, one, two, three, four, five, six devices. But if we go autopilot devices and we do edit on the rules, preview, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's the same thing. See, so it, however you want to do it, if you want to do it by the profile name, if you want to do it by the device name, and you can also exclude these as well. So if you had a special group for some reason, and you had a configuration that you did want to push to everyone except a group, you can do that. So I'm going to just look at my delivery optimization for a moment. That's going to all devices. But let's say I wanted to exclude those autopilot devices. I can exclude the same filter. There we go, M365 corporate devices. And it'll go to everyone but them. 
So yes, we kind of cheated the system a little bit, but it works to our advantage. So whenever I hear Microsoft start trying to talk to folks about moving away from group assignment and moving towards uh, the virtual groups, like all devices, all users, this, uh, you know, is a little jarring to people, especially, you know, myself personally, I've spent so much time building out this dynamic group structure with the group tags and, you know, figuring out a clean way to organize everything. And now we get to keep the best of both worlds, right? Um, let me know if you're using filters, if you're completely new to the group tag strategy to begin with. Uh, check out, I'll have the link below. It was a five-part series I did. It definitely helps as you're onboarding autopilot devices to keep them organized immediately at procurement. And we can, you know, essentially keep the same flow now when we're assigning things from Intune. We'll be seeing you.